What's up everyone, back for another beer review. And today I'm actually going to be doing another comparison review, this time of two beers from Big Lake Brewing and they're out of Holland, Michigan. And I have their Haze and Blue and their Sparty Party. So Haze and Blue is a New England style IPA that is brewed with Citra and Mosaic hops and also blueberries, comes in at 5.5% alcohol by volume, 20 IBUs in the time of review. This can is just over two months old. Meanwhile, Sparty Party is also a New England style IPA that is brewed with Amarillo and Mandarina Bavaria hops. Comes in at 7% alcohol by volume, 53 IBUs in the time of review. This can is just under two months old. And both of these beers were given to me by a good friend of mine and viewer of the channel, Jeff, AK No Jinx. So thank you very much, Jeff. Jeff actually took a trip to the Western New York area about eight days ago at the time of this review. And he went to the other half brewing company and the Mortales Brewing Company. And I tagged along and uh, he gave me a shit ton of beers from Michigan. And these were two of them. Now, when he gave them to me, he was like, do you want to try them? And I remember seeing uh, Brad Allison and his wife, Jessica, review both of these. I think it was back-to-back -back days. And I was like, man, that's a really cool theme. We'll talk about that in a second. So I was like, yeah, I'd love to try them. He's like, well, they're a little older. They're like around two months old. You don't have to review them. Whatever can just drink them. I was like, no, I want to review them. This is cool. And I'll tell you the reason why this is cool. So first off, thanks, Jeff. But the reason why this is cool is because these are brewed for the University of Michigan, the Wolverines, and uh, Michigan State University, uh, the Spartans. So you kind of have the rivalry between Michigan State and Michigan and two different beers. Now, I am not really doing a comparison re review as much as like, oh man, how, you know, how do they compare? They're, they're similar beers. They're quite a bit different. One in point, uh, one and a half percent difference in ABV. Uh, different ingredients. This one has blueberries. This one doesn't. Different hops. But I just thought I would see which one I enjoy more. I remember Jessica and Brad enjoying the Haze and Blue a little bit more, but for me, I don't know. I don't know which one I'm going to enjoy more. Um, I like beers with blueberries in them, but I also like 7% New England style IPAs that just are hopped well. So uh, we're going to do the mat over a massive beer reviews pour. Uh, this is going to be a terrible pour, I'll guarantee it, but we'll do the dual pour. Are you guys ready for this? Here we go. Okay, so the Haze and Blue going kind of crazy. This is the best best pour you'll ever see on YouTube, hands down, no comparisons. Come at me, bro. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna let that settle down a little bit and we'll get into the Sparty Party first while that settles down. So uh, that pours out this really vibrant, like burnt orange color. Again, I poured it pretty much down the middle, so you're gonna get crazy head. This has like a two and a half, three finger amount of head, uh, off white, little cream color look to it, super hazy and, and murky. It looks like you'd expect a, uh, New England style IPA to look, albeit maybe a little bit darker, definitely darker than the blueberry one. Let's get a nose. I've been hailing it because I know what I'm doing. A professional, even though I'm not. I'm not even an amateur. I'm terrible. Wow, that actually smells really good. Tons of orange. There's a little bit of malt coming forward. This is just under two months old, but a little bit of malt, like a bready. I'm almost, almost getting like a honey crackery thing too. Honey, honey bread. But a lot of orange. Orange zest, uh, juicy orange. A little bit of uh, like a pine resin a bit. More of like an herbaceousness to this one. Touch of stone fruit, peach, closer to the pit, mango. Not a ton of tropical fruit. Really big on the orange. Amarillo and Mandarina for me usually produce orange vibes. And this one has it in spades. So definitely orange here. Let me, uh, look at this. What, a, what an awesome pour. Let me pour this properly now and see if I can... Uh, Man, that's, I don't know. I didn't do anything to this. Uh, maybe it's the blueberries. I don't know what it is. So anyway, that pours out similar to this one, albeit a bit lighter. And that's hopefully going to come off on camera as light. as this light orange color. Uh, murky, turbid, the whole nine. About a three and a half, four finger. Bright white, fluffy, almost soap sudsy looking head to it. Um, yeah, let's see if I can get a nose on this underneath the crazy head. Oh, I get a little bit of like a sweet, sweet blueberry with a little bit of tartness. Smells authentic. Doesn't smell like a, uh, you know, like a like a fake like blueberry yogurt type of thing. It ha actually has like an authentic blueberry character. Just a, just a hint though. Citron mosaic, sure. More citrusy, ruby red grapefruit, orange, very similar to this one. But then I'm getting a touch of passion, a passion fruit, touch of pineapple. It's, it's honestly tough to pull through this head. A touch of malt. Kind of... Um, Kind of similar to that one. More, I'd say, bready than anything. 
yeah, it smells good. I'm actually getting the blueberry the most out of this one. Now, both of these have been out of the fridge for like 30 to 45 minutes. So these are probably in like 50, 55 range. Yeah, they, they, they're cool, but not cold. I'm going to actually get into this one first because that's that was the whole plan on how they're, I mean, on my left, usually when I go to first on the right, not, but the head was crazy. We'll see if I can get through it. So cheers, everybody. And thanks again, Jeff. Blueberries there. It's very subtle though, and it's authentic. More of a zesty grapefruit, zesty, um, a zesty grapefruit, zesty, zesty citrus fruit in general, uh, zesty, pithy, more of the peel than the actual fruit itself. 5.5%, this is like higher side of light body, lower side of medium body, so it's appropriate for the ABV. Your mouthfeel, soft, smooth, not really creamy, but a nice soft smoothness. I think it's appropriate within the New England style. So body and mouthfeel, pretty damn good here. Yeah, right up front, subtle kiss of blueberries. Pass through the palate, a little bit of that like bready doughiness comes from that malt. Halfway through the palate, zesty citrus fruit. A touch of that passion fruit and pineapple I was getting on the nose, but very, very minute, very dialed back. It finishes semi-dry, no bitterness slight touch of residual sweetness and it's uh, relatively clean there's this ever so slight resinous like pine herbaceousness like just like a resinous hop character in the back of the throat but it's very small on each sip it's not building at all it's just kind of staying at the same level yeah it's really easy to drink this is like a uh i like to say like a summertime crusher um, I like the subtle, uh, subtle, nuanced blueberry vibe to this one, but this is like just a solid New England style IP with a, with a kiss of blueberry. And I dig that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. It's pretty solid. Now, I don't know if fresh, it, it would be more blueberry forward or more of the hops probably would come to the forefront. And I would think that would be a little bit more welcome, but just over two months old, I think that's tricking pretty good. So, uh, let's get into the Sparty party. Cheers, everyone. Ooh, that's nice. Ooh, a little bit of a different twang to it. This is a bigger beer, you can tell. You know, just drinking them side by side, I know this is 1.5% higher than this. At the end of the day, though, this one just drinks bigger. The body's more like medium, a little bit over medium body. The mouthfeel is soft and smooth, slightly creamy. This is, I think, more in the New England style realm body and mouthfeel than this one, especially for something that's 7%. I think this hits its marks at 7% more than this does at 5.5, although this is solid. I think this is better uh, body and mouthfeel wise. Uh, taste wise, though, I think I prefer, prefer, uh, prefer if, I could, if I could speak today, I prefer the uh, haze and blue just uh, on the first couple sips. It has a lot of orange in it all kinds of orange, getting a little bit of orange marmalade vibe, uh, but just like juicy orange, zesty orange, orange peel, a little bit of candied orange, all the orange in this one. But there's not to my palate much more past that in terms of the hop character. Touch of like earthiness. So right up front, you're, I'm hit with the, like a big, um, a big crackery, almost bready type of malt character. Past the palate, that orange, all that orange hits. And then it finishes slightly dry more of a residual sweetness on this one and not as clean uh there is a like a li lingering uh, earthiness uh lingering zestiness a slight bitterness this is like not even moderately bitter it's like low to moderate but there's more bitterness in this one than uh in the haze and blue definitely getting like a honey character too probably come from the malt almost like i've used this tasting you no know, uh once or twice before but like honey uh Honey dipped oranges, like you took oranges and you like just dipped them in a little bit of honey. That's what I'm kind of getting with that, which is a nice character. But I think this one is a little bit more, this one is a bit harder to drink for me. I think, I think it just, it's a little bit heavier and it's not as complex. While this one has a little bit more complexity, but it's lighter. So the way I would look at it is like, I, I think I enjoy both of these. They're on like, they're on an even playing field for me. Um, they're on level ground, but I think I give the nod towards haze and blue because I do like that kiss of blueberry. And I think this would be more of a, I could drink two or three cans summer crusher. I think they're both well made, um, but I, I do enjoy this one more. So rating on the haze and blue, 
I'm thinking I'm gonna go give them both 3.75s, but I'm gonna do the whole, uh, I think this is like more of a 3.8 out of five, where this is, uh, the Sparty Party is more of a 3.7 out of five. So Haze and Blue gets a 3.8 out of five. Sparty Party gets a 3.7 out of five. They're both in the 3.7 range. I think I prefer this one a little bit more. This is more of like, I'm gonna crush a bunch of uh, beers, you know, tailgating or whatever. I'm gonna go watch a University of Michigan football game and bring a, a four pack of this and have have a good time. This is more like, I just want a New England style uh, IPA today, one can, and I'm gonna drink it. I think they're both well-made. I think they did a pretty good job with them. Again, these aren't super fresh. I knew that going into it. Jeff knew that giving them to me, so it's not like surprise or whatever. I think with a little bit more freshness, maybe at like, you know, two or three weeks old, these would be a little bit more vibrant. I still think I'd like this one more because I think the hop character would shine through. But as is, I do enjoy them. So the last thing we got to do is I got Dark Corvée. Almost. All right, that's about similar. So we'll pour the Haze and Blue into the Sparty Party and we'll have a party ourselves. I don't know what I'm doing. Don't listen to me. Don't ever listen to me. All right, so... Yeah, that kind of is a mix between both of them. If it leans more towards the Sparty Party, but it is darker, so that makes sense. Has about a finger of this really creamy, um, really creamy looking uh, head, like more of an off-white uh, looking head. But yeah, that looks awesome. That actually looks better than both of them, I think, individually. So let's get those. Getting a little bit of the blueberry, ever so slight touch, but more of the, the Sparty Party coming through. Let, let me cleanse my palate because, you know, <laughs> this is an aperture hour, even though it is. Yeah, I'm getting, I'm actually getting a decent amount of the blueberry, a little bit of like that uh, zesty uh, citrus peel, grapefruit, things of that nature. Getting more of the malt blast from this, like that honey uh, bread marmalade thing going on, but it smells pretty good. Cheers, everyone. Now, I don't like that as much as that. Similar to that, I think this one kind of took over. Yeah, um, Sparty Party kind of took over. I'm getting more of that orange marmalade, all the orange, more bready, more malt character, a little bit more bitterness, kiss of blueberry, very subtle. If I didn't have blueberry, and I probably wouldn't be able to tell you uh, based on, you know, doing the couve, uh, the couve, I would say 3.5 out of 5 for the uh, the, the couve. I, the, the couve is not as good. I think both of these beers are better on their own. So don't, don't couve in them. No couve in them. Do not couve them. Just drink them as is. So, yeah, anyway, Haze and Blue, 3.8 out of 5. Sparty Party, 3.7 out of 5. Looks like in this situation, Michigan wins. Uh, but by an ever so slight amount. They, they, you know, they won like 31 to 30, something like that. Very close. But I do appreciate, Jeff, you giving me both these beers because it was a lot of fun to do the side-by-side. -side. Uh, I would definitely buy this when it, whenever it's released, I think these are released every late summer, early fall. They've done it the last couple of years, uh, specifically for you know football season and whatnot. So I would definitely grab probably a four pack of this each year and maybe one four pack or just a can or two of this. Uh, price and availability, I think this was $3 a can. I don't know if this was the exact same price. I remember Jeff saying $3 a can. So this is probably three to three fifty a can, somewhere in that range. So for a four pack, you're looking $12, $13. Good price range. Uh, for something that has blueberries in it, Citro Mosaic, I think that's a pretty good deal. Uh, for this one being 7%, if it's like a buck extra, a four pack, that's a good deal. Uh, yeah, solid overall availability. I think they get distribution all over Michigan. I don't think Big Lake distri uh, distributes outside of Michigan. So uh, bummer for anyone outside of Michigan that's a uh, Michigan or Michigan State fan, but it is what it is. Anyway, thanks again, Jeff. Thanks to everybody stopping by for another beer review. Till the next one. Cheers. Oh yeah, hang on. 5.5%, 7%. really can't tell outside of their bodies the difference in ABV. This one drinks like it's five. That one drinks like it's five. So yeah, pretty cool that they can hide the alcohol like that, especially at the 7%. Anyway, cheers.